what we were discussing yesterday regarding the uh, the basic stuff related to Azure. Today, what we we'll, what we're going to do, we'll try to understand what is the subscriptions and how you get enroll yourself into Azure portal and what are the mandatory things that you need to remember before you start practicing the things. We'll see a couple of basic things again today. Then we'll try to understand the difference between a public and private and the networking part within the Azure. Just a moment. Just a moment, there is a lot of background noise that you do fighter jet. AZ303 or AZ104 or any other course. Where do we start? Basically, if I'm talking about starting point and how you will enroll to your portal it's more of more of your gmail creation or any other account creation okay so you can go to portal.azure.com and you can enroll for yourself it's more of self-explanatory and i hope everyone has the same but <clears throat> once you get into the portal okay so what we are discussing on the other day Discussing about Azure regions. Right. If I say region is a if I say one region, that means it's a physical location in somewhere, say central India. Means Azure has a data center in Pune. Okay. In this scenario, you have only one building. But if you observe, repeating once again, availability zone means you build a region with three different buildings. In the sense, in the same city, you'll have a three different buildings in the same city with some dark fiber. also considered as a region and this you call it as region now the moment you enroll into portal.azure.com okay you have a visibility to everything in the sense all regions there is no restriction okay there are a couple of more things the government sector things government sector undisclosed secure environments that are being managed by azure those things you will not be able to see inside your portal that is accessible via some different URL for the government sectors across the different countries. Now, the moment you log into the portal, okay, you will see a similar kind of window. But if you look at all services, if you look at all services, you will see around 15 or 20 odd categories. And if you look at all services, you will see around 200 plus services categorized into different, different components. Each component will be categorized into different, different category, which belongs to certain functionality. Now, all these components are available across all the regions. In the sense, if I want to create serverless function serverless function i can create here or i can create east us okay but where i have enrolled myself i have enrolled myself onto this portal from india okay now how we will do the payment As a startup or as an enterprise or as an individual, you have enrolled into Azure portal. Right. We 
need to set up some sort of billing for the components that you are utilized and every month Microsoft will charge you back right so for that for that you need to you need to set up second point I'm talking about set up subscription subscription is your billing method for the components that you are going to deploy inside the Azure portal. Okay, now how Azure will identify you? How Azure will identify you? You are the right person. I need to add a billing. Okay, the moment you enroll into portal. Okay, the moment you enroll into the portal. Go to Azure Active Directory, which is again a platform as a service component and properties. There is a component called directory ID. Okay, this is unique for every user, whether they log in with the Gmail account or Outlook or corporate mailing account, anything you log in you will get one unique ID that you call it as call it as directory ID just to identify you as a unique individual right so now for this directory ID if some some resources you are looking at in Pune or maybe in UK or in Singapore if you're trying to deploy some sort of application or some set of servers right so before you do anything you must have a subscription subscription is how you want to pay the bill as simple as that right so how to how to enroll for a subscription cost management and billing you will see the subscription and for me as of now I have four different subscriptions and two of them are disabled and two of them are I have created for myself just to operate it on a day-to-day -day. so what you have to do you have to click on new subscription if you are creating account for yourself for the first time on top you'll see some of the some of the subscription displayed here one two three around six subscriptions are there keep them aside there will be one more subscription called free trial okay free trial means the one time one time for the first time when you create an account and enrolling for a subscription Azure will provide you one month of free trial with that somewhere around 13,000 rupees or something I don't remember exactly. It's been a long I guess uh, Earlier they used to allocate the Free trial for $300 or something now once the currency conversions and Building methods have got changed So they are offering somewhere around 13,000 free credit on your free trial account means you will simply add with one free trial and th that will show you 13,000 for next 30 days you can use it for that what you have to do you have to select free trial imagine this is free trial You need to provide your credit card so they will charge you around two rupees for authorization
no upfront cost no commitment you can cancel it at any point of time that 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 belongs to pay as you go but when you select a free trial you have to provide some of the information your authentication and payment information you have to provide your credit card information let me try Still waiting for the SMS just a second. Seven nine three two seven. Okay, so then you have to provide your credit card details you have to provide your credit card details and then please make sure whatever the credit card details that you have populated over there the same address you need to provide here sometimes what happen if if credit card has a different billing address and you provided some other address sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't i don't know why even it happened with aws portal as well okay so try to match with the address what you have given while taking the credit card same address you have to provide and please do not select any technical support so anyway in your free trial you will not get all these options but never ever select any technical support always select no technical support means you enroll for pay as you go subscription example okay pay as you go subscription means first thing you'll have free trial that will go for 30 days okay you can deploy anything anywhere based on your number of resources they will cut down the costing from the available 13,000 credit okay after one month this will automatically disable that's it okay once this is disabled either you have to go with pay as you go if you are looking at just practicing or if you are just looking at learning purpose then you need to enroll for pay as you go or you are enrolling for any startup or something then contact support along with documentation in the sense you have a startup registration and documents and stuff and the funder who, who is raising the funds for your startup so if you can provide all those details with the support team they will review it and they will give you some sort of discounted subscription in the sense let's say on a monthly basis you're making one lakh bill okay straight away they'll say 40 percent discount for this account so you'll get a final invoice of 60,000 that you have to pay every month if you are looking at these sort of accounts then you need to contact support and there may be another certain type of accounts call it as enterprise subscription okay in enterprise subscription what happened companies will directly contact azure accounting team and they will enroll for enterprise subscription Okay. in enterprise subscription you no need to provide any sort of credit card or something only thing is you just need to enable with the invoice address invoice address means once a calendar calendar month is closed it will automatically generate the invoice and that will email to 
the billing team of your enterprise organization so what they will do they will do the payment via sap okay po purchase order again as to each bill or each invoice that has been generated by microsoft that's it that is post dated wire transfer for every month that is a different subscription okay in this if you have if you have long term commitment with microsoft in in in, in the sense you are 100% sure that you are going to stay with microsoft for next 3 years then you can definitely negotiate with microsoft saying i'll be with you for next 3 years so straight away you will get around 30 to 49% discount on every resource that you deployed but provided you have long term commitment of minimum 3 years okay these are the couple of cost saving options available within azure when you are looking at your business perspective but if you are looking at learning perspective start with free trial provide your details and provide your credit card they will charge you 2 rupees for the authentication and subscription will be enabled automatically with 30000 credit okay once this is done even afterwards if you want to practice it you can enroll for pay as you go subscription and give your credit card they will not charge you anything here but once the once the calendar month is completed then whatever the resources that you have deployed let's say on central pune i have deployed one virtual machine and in uk i have de deployed one sql database and in singapore i have deployed one storage account for data upload so for these three components for these three components bill will be generated in inr based on your subscription because you took a subscription in inr even though you have deployed your resources must be in pounds must be in singapore dollars right still it will be converted and automatically generated in your respective currency format and added gst to it the calculations are by default okay any any questions up to this satish or rajesh mohammed Mamad, uh, you want yeah, to ping me right yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just want to understand what is what is your experience into Azure? Uh, do have, I, I, you have I, some sort of experience? No, no. Yeah, I'm starting with Azure. Okay, Rajesh. Hi. Is my voice audible today? Yeah, yeah, it is audible now. Okay. Thank you. So I am a new voice in Azure. Um, my uh main thing is to complete uh, at least one azure certificate um uh, within the coming three months mm -hmm. also there is a there is a course called uh, azure databricks um with arc related stuff so i i need to complete couple of uh, courses in that so that is what i am looking for okay your past experience i know mohammed is a vmware expert okay so i am a tech data management manager um i i work for a consulting company here in us okay um, and uh, i i am mainly working on like uh, uh data governance and security quality. yeah so i am working on those kind of projects um but uh, this year like one of the things that i wanted to complete is i should yeah because i i have created a group i have seen uh, more than 150 people are uh, joined in that group i don't know but uh, when when the time yesterday and every yesterday i have seen a couple of 10 or 15 or people they have joined mm -hmm. okay today i have seen uh, only few of three uh, as of now okay if you guys are interested in probably we'll we'll uh, dissolve that group and we can start off with the 
I have one more guy who is looking it. I'll, I'll add him to this so that it will be easy for me. Yeah, sure. Um, so today is kind of a demo, right? Uh, so I have uh, a, I have a this mm -hmm. third session. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I have an account which my company has given me. So the billing stuff is taken care by them. I just mm -hmm. have to deploy those uh, components yeah. and start playing around that. Definitely, yeah, sure. So let's go ahead. So first thing, was, as we are discussing, first thing what you need, you need an account. Okay, if you are having a company account, use that. Or if you want to enroll for yourself, create an account and take some subscription. I'll, I'll recommend pay as you go or a free trial if you're looking at for one month testing. Okay, once this is done, then my next question is, where do we start? You logged into the portal and you set up the billing. Okay, if I say billing, imagine I logged into the portal. I have access to all the regions, as I said, all the 50 odd regions. Now I have my subscription in INR, right? And this subscription is binded to my directory ID because I am the owner and I have some directory ID which has subscription. Okay, in other words, let me go back. Can rename those subscription subscriptions normally it is pay as you go so subscription id and under which directory account and what is my role and what kind of subscription i have if i have any discount then offer id will be added i'll start away underscore 40 or maybe if i if i'm having some startup start away 60 percent discount those kind of things will be added in the offer this is my subscription ID and the directory ID. If I go to add to directory, because you might have 50,000 employees in your organization, but one directory will be attached with subscription. Rest all of the rest all the end users or contributors for that subscription. Please remember. short copy this is my directory if you're if you're looking at organization perspective imagine this directory ID is your billing team billing team ID maybe maybe billing at the rate abc.com is the company so with this ID with this directory ID subscription will be associated and under that you have imagine four different countries four different offices office one has 500 people two around 250 and rest of other offices also so everyone can log into the portal and deploy it that is a different story but these people cannot see this subscription and cannot identify this directory id because these are contributors for the same subscription okay and let's say Mohammed is working on working from Bangalore for abc.com and he is looking after all the databases so he'll be provided with platform as a service components with specific specific I'll, I'll show you with the specific uh, are back you call it as role based access control like in your VMware okay and you'll be able to manage only DB components okay and office one has a business unit one they'll be able to manage certain components and they cannot even touch the subscription they, they don't know what is the directory ID and office two has another business unit they'll manage their own resources okay consolidatedly everything will be added into subscription 
at the for billing calculation and the bill will be generated and attached to directory id and directory id has a details related to so and so company and so and so address they will send an email with the attachment once the calendar month is completed so if you are building expert in azure your job role is something how you will manage all these four different office people who are deploying the resources inside the portal because they can if they have given a permission to deploy anything irrespective of what they are doing they can deploy the resources anywhere and they can leave as it is then they don't know because they are not paying the bill the bill billing will be added to the company's account right so in that situation what you can do you can put certain rollback roll role based access controls for each and every individuals within the organization that is different and one more one more different terminology is okay the, the company has operations in three different countries one is in us and uk other one is india now they do have a resources across across all the three locations or all the three regions region one and region two region three these are the adopted regions in the sense i have decided to deploy my resources on the three regions because my work is more concentrated on these three areas so in that case in that case the building is on the building is on usd you can still deploy the resources in india that is I rupees right and if it is in pounds still you'll get a bill in dollars because the, the, by 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 default when you took the sub subscription if you go to yeah your question just just what are you saying where do we see directory ID in Azure portal if you log into the portal on the left hand side go to active directory okay and scroll down there is a properties tab and on the properties you will see directory id that is unique okay that you can identify and once you go to subscription go to any subscription the currency is already defined in it on what currency your subscription has been taken so you deploy anything inside this portal everything will be calculated in INR only the billing mechanism is set by default okay now what is the hierarchy for the resource deployment you have a directory ID given by someone else and that person has took the subscription that's okay now you are a contributor in this portal you can log in and create one virtual machine now before i create a virtual machine what all the things that i need to make sure so azure has azure has some mechanism called service service bus or service architecture or you can simply call it as resource group okay the third component in this hierarchy under the subscription you should have resource group please remember okay let's see what the definition the textbook definition says azure resource manager or resource group resource manager is the service and component name is resource group Manage Azure Resource Manager Resource Group by using portal. That's okay. What is this resource group? Is a container holds the resources for an Azure solution. The resources group of the resource group can include all the resources within the solution. Okay, leave about leave out this textbook hyphen definitions. What exactly it will do? Let's see. So you have already two components. 
directory id and subscription i am saying there is another component under the subscription resource group it is deployed via resource manager service which has the core services deployed by azure in every region means azure has some internal services right along with the server components or customer components so one of the service azure default service bus component is your resource group it is simply a logical collection of what you are deploying inside so what is the duty of this resource group okay in if you are uh, looking at resource group mapping your data center inside your your data center inside your v center what it does the logical collection of all your objects right so this is same as your logical collection of all your components inside your azure portal let's say i am creating one public ip or i have created one virtual machine okay i have defined one network topology or created one database or i have deployed one serverless function or i simply created web app web application or else i have created backup and disaster recovery or else i can create some of the iot components or i created one firewall okay each and everything will be counted as a component all the component must be tagged with one of the resource group without resource group there is no tracking mechanism for these resources because because resource group will give you control or tracking mechanism for all these resources okay my another another tricky part is these three might be in us okay some of these components might be in uk some of these components might be in india doesn't matter resource group is global okay resource group is also one of the component within the azure right but this component doesn't have a location limitation but some of the some of these components has location based if i create a server a virtual machine in us that is bounded with us only right that means virtual machine is simply a collection of certain files those files are saved in us so so each and every component in azure where you will deploy let me go ahead and try to deploy something i'll not deploy anything at the moment let, let me show you uh, network security groups create okay what is the first thing it is showing subscription go back directory id means once you log into the portal it has a directory id no need to worry about it right right now under the directory id i have the subscription you can have multiple subscriptions under one directory id for that reason only i have created two subscriptions okay this is this is one credit card this is another credit card even if one credit card is blocked at least i have a second sub subscription so that i can run my resources without any issue i can flip the resources between subscriptions i can change the subscription once the resource group is controlled just to just want just to demonstrate uh, practically that is a little tough to change the subscription and everything but yeah so first first component if you want to try and creating anything first component is subscription and the second component is resource group okay so what is resource group you can create with any name i'll say create simply it will create or go to resource groups 
we have few resource groups so you can create one more resource group again the same definition resource group a container holds related resources for azure solution the resource group can include all the resources for a solution or only those that you want to manage in a, as a group you decide how you want to allocate the resources to a resource group based on what most of the sense for your organization in a sense i have a one business unit okay unit one they have certain infrastructure that they are managing what i will do i will create a resource group and i'll ask them please use this resource group name whenever you create a certain component that belongs to your unit and i have another business unit i say unit 2 and i'll ask those people who works for another business unit or another project they will deploy components under second resource group now as a architect or as a admin certain 104 if you are looking at 104 you have admin tasks to perform okay you have a new user onboarded okay he is working in his team so what you will do you will go and click on the subscription sorry click on the use resource group let's say which is second business unit under this i'll go to iam I'll put a user permissions here so that this new user or a new employee can see only these resources. You don't know whether there is another unit and how many people are working there, how much uh, how much infra that other resource group is holding. He doesn't have any idea because he can only whenever he log in, he can only see this kind of segregated resource group and their component that's it his his focus area is on this project so he cannot view these things that is possible using resource groups that is what the statement what he's making here resources based on what makes the most sense for your organization how you want to manage it it is up to you but this is mandatory without this you cannot deploy any resource So what I will do, I'll say AZ303 and this is also one component as per as per Azure terminology. So it must stay in even though it, it can be accessed globally and it is spreaded across globally, but it should have some location on which region you want to deploy this. So what I will do, I will deploy this in Central India. That's it. Refresh. Oh, it is some graphics problem. Azure portal has a lot of these bugs. You have to wait for some time. So what I did, what I did. Now look at the bottom side under directory id under subscription i have created one resource group where i have created this resource group central india which is pune that's it now whatever the resource that I will go ahead and deploy inside my Azure portal that might be in Australia or maybe in Canada or in US or in Singapore doesn't matter everything will be tagged to my resource group which is created in Pune now this resource group will track okay so and so person has deployed one virtual machine in Australia today morning nine o'clock and he destroyed or deleted a machine at 9 45 
so in that case please include one hour bill for this particular resource in australia in australia this machine cost is eight rupees per hour okay the same kind of machine he deployed in us and at 10 o'clock and he destroyed at 11 10 okay so resource group will tell subscription this resource has been deployed and live for one hour 10 minutes please add two hours billing for this resource and the same resource same size same virtual machine the cost is six rupees per hour so 12 rupees will be added to your billing okay if you power on a machine it is counted as one hour bill and there are certain components you have one database here okay cosmos no sql db cosmos no sql db you deployed it and used it for 15 minutes 30 seconds and you stopped stopped it so resource group will inform subscription okay so and so user has deployed cosmos db in canada and used it for 15 minutes 30 seconds calculate accordingly to pro databases only for 15 minutes and 30 seconds only because database calculations are per second based building okay like what you have every other component within within azure each and every component has distinct building methodology let's say i have one load balancer or i have one peering connection peering connection is sending some data from Australia to Singapore in between two servers you have trans transported or send it, send, you send some data from Australia to Singapore and sender 8 GB and receiver 8 GB so send on the sender side 8 GB building will be included inbound and for this inbound and for this outbound for Australia it is outbound so for Australian resource 8 GB and per GB 0.01 or, or 0.05 rupees per GB whatever whatever the billing method so that is also included because each and every component has a different building mechanism that we need to understand while deploying okay so so far what we covered we covered subscriptions direct directories subscriptions and resource groups now now imagine let's take some sample scenario what we are discussing on the other day imagine you have your office and some of your global offices also data center or four data centers yes two okay and you right so four different data centers and you do have offices across the globe now your plan is this is traditional environment i'm, I'm talking about okay and on this data center you have very minimal infrastructure when I say very minimal infrastructure, this is kind of DR setup. Okay, and as part of the adopting public cloud, at first phase, you want to get rid of this. Now, in which location you will deploy your resources? in which location you will deploy your resources in order to get rid of your traditional data center right so what you will do you will log into portal and you will try and identify the feasible nearby location for this and you will try to deploy your resources 
say this is in Virginia and you cannot deploy your resources in Virginia so what I will do I'll go to portal and Azure regions global infrastructure locations so if my resources my primary data center in Virginia that means existing existing production data center traditional on-premise okay is in Virginia so I probably select as a DR means doesn't matter where it is sitting for this location and for this location if this, this is a feasible nearby location so I will select West US as Azure candidate region to replace your existing DR site okay that is first step the second step what is the second step every office has 10 dot IP range right including your data centers now what kind of IP addressing that you will adopt in Azure right you need to you need to look into the existing network topology if I say existing network topology let's say this office is running with 69.x this is running with 128 10.22 and this data center equipment 10.20x and 10.21x something just an example and this one 10.3 to 10.10 the whole range and the UK one 10.103 to 10.110 and Europe 10.111 to 10.112 and this office 10.169 just an example and this has 10.29 this has 10.209 or 200 whatever each and every site has a distinct unique IP range that is operating as a individual site across the globe now if you want to adopt Azure West US as one of the candidate for your business inside your company what IP range that you are going to assign to this how we will determine that Okay, first thing you identified the region somehow near to both the location and practically 300 miles apart between your primary and Azure secondary. That's okay. And in between these two might be 50 miles apart so that you can export the data or you can consolidate easily. That's a different criteria. Now, second thing is I need an IP range for my Azure. Before we go and discuss about the IP ranges within Azure, what it supports, let's understand in traditional way and basically in Lehman, what kind of IP addresses that it supports. I said 10 dot series. So what is this 10 dot series? Or some of the organization will adopt. Or very rarely you'll see these kind of ranges. So everyone knows these are private. What is the significant difference between your private and public IPs in organization perspective and how you will how you will adopt those things in Azure. Where to start? You got it? Just a moment. Another another fighter jet. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. So now I, I need to understand little little more about networking topologies because 
we we are not a network admins or if you are working on a purely network area and you don't know the server infrastructure or you don't know the dbs and the front end development part it is not going to work so in in other words okay if you look at the three tier architecture the basic funda okay your db your application and your presentation okay so some some people totally dedicate the career on here and some of them over here and some people will spend how we will support this infra from back end some people will dedicate their career okay how we will manage this network topology as a network admin and infra and if you go inside you'll have types of different roles l1 l2 l3 and kind of monitoring l0 right service desk keep them all these things aside now as a solution if you're looking into azure in a big picture okay one should adopt all these things and can handle everything inside the azure that is what the general expectation in the market okay means if there is a certain job role called cloud sre site recovery engineer what their duty inside the azure they have around 2000 servers of infrastructure example and this guy is responsible to manage the network part the infrastructure flat infrastructure as a service components and some of the platform as a service components and security like active directory and other stuff and governance monitoring and alerting and reporting those kind of setups and modify all these things he should be proficient in security aspects as well in short that that that, that role covers all the day to day operations that someone should perform inside the portal or in a automated way there is no segregated job roles like a traditional uh, way how how we look into the job roles in a different dimension okay those things have already got changed for 4 or 5 years back in cloud so here one should know network topology at least at minimum basic and one should know the infra infrastructure components one should know the database operations a little bit and if you are i'm not talking about development point of view if you are a purely developer then even though you know the development part of your python go ruby and c sharp dotnet any kind of platform that your application architect maybe on on your side but at least you know how these cloud components can be adopted for your project that is also another expectation in another dimension right now considering all these things now if i want if i want to talk about technical perspective where do we start okay and based on that only i have created the course content let me go back so this is what we covered resource manager and stuff so we'll start with the basic networking topology and this will be like another 7 to 8 days almost like every day we will do a different kind of testing on a network various levels in terms of customer solution okay so before we start with this i just want to understand what is the basic difference between versus private ip okay how we can use them in azure for 
enterprise customer or startup doesn't matter okay doesn't matter to whom you are working with right so we just need to understand on a high level i'm not saying go and uh, learn the ccna part that's a different story but okay so we'll start with this tomorrow on the ip addressing other stuff then how this can be adopted into azure considering the previous example what i'm talking about you identify the region and you have a whole company connected together on a private network and you want to insert azure as a one of one of the other one of the other office or another another location in your in your existing infra then what kind of ip ranges that you will adopt anyway that is in private only but how you will design and deploy the things within azure considering the current infrastructure what customer is already running with that, that is what our starting point tomorrow we are going to start with the basic difference between a public and private a little bit and then we'll go ahead with designing part of azure networking how you can deploy the things within azure that we will discuss tomorrow okay with this i'll stop here if you guys have any questions then we can take it for a few minutes Rajesh, Satish, Jia. Um, so this is Rajesh. Uh, when is yeah, Rajesh. batch starting? Okay, consider, consider this is the same batch. Okay, if I have, if you guys are continuing or three or four or at least, then probably we can continue on the same. Okay, and uh, who will Satish. provide me more details about this course and all that? I'm I'm the one. Okay, you can ping me. Uh, Okay, sure. Uh, I can ping you here or in the yeah, what? You, you can ping me, yeah. Let me let me ping you the course details. I've already shared this. I'll ping you this. This is I'm going to cover. Nutshell. Mm -hmm. I just ping you on the chat. You can review that. That covers the most of the most of the three zero three part. Okay. That includes your uh, 104, more of the admin part, but you're looking at the security aspects, right? So it is more of designing the things, architecting the solutions for customers in Azure. So I'll try to cover as much as I can on 303. Okay. Okay. So that's what, Mohamad? Any questions? Jia, yeah. hello? So this Azure, this moment. So this is Azure three zero three. Is is uh, the certification name or? Uh... Yes, it's it's a course code. Okay. So this includes because the, earlier it was three hundred. Earlier it was three hundred. Now they they renamed and released it with the, some of the additional components that they have come up with. So they okay. amended a lot a lot of lot of components inside the course and. They created a new what one. is the name three. of that certification? Uh, solution architect. Okay. So it's a single exam. Yeah, single exam. There's no prerequisite. Optional is 900. I don't think 900 is no more required of people who have 10 years of experience. Okay. And Jia? Yeah. So the you said this is the beta version, right? So. Uh... Like, what is the uh, expiry date uh, if we give this exam? And uh... uh, the in beta version, what happens? Okay, uh, how, the, how the exam pattern is working and what kind of uh, results that are they getting? They'll, they'll test it on a beta. So, in most of the time previously, when I gave a beta exams, you used to get two items. If you pay for exam, okay, with the same costing, you will get two items. Okay, that's the beta. Okay, once the official official uh, certification part is released, then probably it will be one attempt on the same exam. But this is the new new pattern that they have come up with last month. Actually, it should have released in uh, March itself, but due to COVID and stuff, they have postponed a little bit. Now they released, so it will be like till 22. At least two years they will maintain this course code. If you give a certification that will be valid for at least two years and more. 
is it online can we give it or uh, do we need go to center yeah yeah you can you can give it online nowadays they are you can give it on your home what are the certificate charges Six thousand five hundred, one sixty five dollars or something okay So any other questions? Let's see. I don't have uh, access to the Google Drive. Can you share the PDF file? Yeah. Satish, you, you just click on this link. It will automatically open because I have, I gave access to public. They can directly view it. Okay, and for Azure portal access, you need to register yourself with your Gmail ID or Outlook ID in portal.azure.com. Register yourself and enroll for one subscription. Okay, try to enroll it for free subscription for now. At least you will practice it for a whole month. Then later on, you can you can take pay as you go subscription. But in free subscriptions, there are certain limitations. You cannot deploy all sizes of machines or you can you cannot deploy all types of components when you want okay there are certain limitations in free trial that we have to adjust okay yeah i'll share some of the details in uh, whatsapp okay you guys can refer it i'll also upload this video and the rest of the videos i'll not going to upload into youtube so other videos from tomorrow onwards i'll, I'll put it on uh, google drive whoever is enrolled for this maybe you people and i'll share it on google drive only Let uh, me stop so, here. Uh, just don't go. If we miss uh, any class, so we'll get the recordings, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll share all the recordings. Okay. Okay. Right. Let me stop here. We can catch up tomorrow.